and here we are. Yeah, no countdown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry, this is my first time uh, controlling the wheel for our presentation here. Monica is uh, having a well-deserved rest day following her amazing organization of Fostum and uh, the Ubuntu Fostum presence that we had. Um, so you're left with me, and I am I'm figuring this out as we go. <laughs> so <laughs> with us today, we have uh, Diogo Constantino and uh, David... Uh, uh, David, can you? I, I don't. Can you please pronounce your last name for me? I. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Negreira. Negreira. David Negreira. Negreira. Yeah. Negreira. Excellent. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I. I. Anyway, <laughs> thank you no both worries. for joining us, and uh, thank you for being on the stream today. We're uh, going to talk about Ubucons, and for those of you that might not know, Ubucons are the community organized. Uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, conference that happens uh, every year. Specifically today, we're talking about Ubucon Europe, which has had a presence since 2016, has a history that goes back uh, going on six years now, which is pretty fantastic. So um, I think the first topic, if we just want to jump right into the first topic, um, uh, actually, before we start, uh, Diego, uh, do you want to tell us about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh so uh, I'm a Portuguese uh, local member uh, and one of the managers or managers of the Portuguese uh, local community, uh, local well, which is local community, uh, and also uh, I'm an Ubuntu member, uh, also contributor for UB Ports, which is the project that took over Ubuntu Touch, Ubuntu for smartphones and tablets, and uh, I, uh, yeah, I've been involved with many. Uh, Ubucons, uh, either by attending or just contributing uh, to social media, me media management or uh, in other roles too, helping organizing. Uh, to dig into that just a little bit, what exactly prompted you to want to get involved in uh, organizing Ubucon? Oh, I remember at the end of the first Ubucon Europe in Essen, um, everybody was so happy how we came to be and uh oh or in about meeting so many uh, other ubuntu lovers and people that were so excited about all of all the environment that we lived those days that um uh, a group of portuguese uh, and spanish got together uh, in conversation uh, and decided that we should have one of those uh eventually that led to a few years later to an Ubucon in Spain and the year after an Ubucon in Portugal. Outstanding. Uh, and David, uh, tell us about yourself. So hi everyone. Uh, so I'm a canonical employee, uh, but even before being a canonical employee, I was already part of the Ubuntu community, uh, part of the Portuguese Ubuntu community as well. For a long time now, uh, me and Diogo are also friends for a very, very long time, um, and I was involved in the organ in organizing the Ubucon 2019 in Sintra. Um, so I think we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in a, in a moment. But um, so I was one of the organizers there, and. Uh, yeah, I'm currently here to talk about what are our plans for 2022, what we have on the sleeve, and mostly what we don't have on the sleeve yet, but we want to take it out of the sleeve. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit about me. Outstanding. Um, about the history of Ubucon. So Ubucon Europe began in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do you care to tell us about, you know, its humble roots, you know, the first place it was, how it's grown, how it's changed. I, I wouldn't call it very humble uh, <laughs> because it, it was in an amazing place, the Unperfect House in Essen, uh, which is a huge, wonderful building. Everybody should go there. If it still exists, I hope it still exists after this uh, um, <laughs> major uh, crisis we have been living. Um, uh, it's a place where there are conferences. It's also an hotel. It's a spa. It's uh, also a place where place where people get together to play uh, board games or study or just eat. Uh, so, and it has many uh, small workshops for artists. Uh, it's so it's a peculiar place. I would call it a, a, um, a community uh, in itself. Uh, and it, it's wonderful. 
so it, and uh, it was quite a rather large event by Ubicon standards. Um, Ubicon Europe. Um, and it had the participation of uh, a lot of canonical employees in, in, in the first year. So I don't think it was so humble. Um, <laughs> It started with a keynote from the from uh, Jane Silver, the, at the time a CEO of Canonical, um, and it was a huge event in in the sense not only of uh, it had so many people, but also many uh, parallel tracks. So it it was great. Um, it changed my life. Someone uh, was telling me uh, in the Portuguese uh, Ubuntu community uh, Telegram group that FOSDEM changed their life. I would say Ubicon Europe changed my life. That's wholesome. I like that. Uh, what about the subsequent years? So what about so, up through 2019? I think 2019 was the, the last the, pre-pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So in the year afterwards, in seven, 2017, it was in Paris. Um, the French community is extremely organized and they put up events every six months, big events every six months. Mm -hmm. So they showed us, um, they modeled the, the Ubicon Europe in Paris um, in a different way from the year before. Um, the Ubicon Europe uh, in Essen was um, an, an inwards event, an event from the Ubicon, Ubuntu community to, to the Ubuntu community. But in Paris, it, it was more modeled after the Ubuntu party, which is the event they organize every six months, which is an event uh, to the outsiders, to people that never heard about Linux, about free software, about open source, or about Ubuntu. Um, they had many tracks, of obviously, about for the insiders. But uh, it um, the place is is a museum, a science museum, uh, which also has a library, which also has uh, so many other things, even a shopping center inside. So it's a big, huge place, and we had a co entire corridor, big corridor of the building where there was. Um, a fab lab, uh, some other things, and people were just getting into the corridor as they do every weekend, just to go see things, and uh, they would engage with the with the stands from uh, Ubuntu, from Mozilla France, from uh, April, which is uh, the the French uh, 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 free and open source uh, community, uh, and uh, they they would learn about things. There were courses happening. There were introductions to to Ubuntu, introductions to Snaps, uh, uh, just places where kids could just play games in Ubuntu. Uh, <laughs> there, so there there was a lot of thing happening, and there were always two or three tracks in parallel. Um, and uh, oh. And people always say that uh, installation parties are no longer, but every single Ubuntu party in, in, on that specific uh, Ubicon Europe, there was also a very big uh, installation party where there are always maybe 10 volunteers installing uh, Ubuntu in computers for people that would just drop by and, oh, I have a computer, I, I have a hard time installing Ubuntu here, Let, can you help me? And the entire day, so and or there were people there the entire day asking for help and getting help. So, yep, installation parties are still big. <laughs> <laughs> so that was um, in France, um, which uh, if if uh, you the Ubuntu community from outside France didn't knew how uh, an Ubuntu party. Uh, would happen every six months. They could see that time, and I went back a few to a few Ubuntu parties, um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. And it's organized to the millimeter. Uh, it, it is incredible. They are. Uh, I always say this is a very well oiled machine uh, of organizing events. Um, so in the, in the year afterwards, it was different again. Uh, it was. Again, a bit more inwards, but there was a difference. The social aspects of Ubicon were uh, drastically uh, enlarged. 
um, it was already bigger in in Paris than it was in 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 Germany. Um, but uh, in uh, Gijon, Shishon, as they say in Asturias, um, uh, it was drastically uh, expanded. We were there a few days earlier, not just one day. There were events organized every day, the entire day before the, the, the Ubicon. Um, and every night there was something happening, some cultural activity, uh, some... Uh, or just uh, going to to have uh, uh, dinner at some uh, uh, local uh, place where we had some local foods, <clears throat> and um, and that that brought the, well, the 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 thing that we never had before, which was families. Families did vacation at Tubukon. Uh, and it, it was cool because we met some new people and their family and. Uh, uh, different type of relations established uh, <laughs> between us. Um, and, and it became a familiar event. Um, and the year afterwards, uh, 2019 in Sintra, um, we just decided to increase everything. The number of days, the number of social events, the number of cultural events. Uh, we started receiving people uh, the weekend before. Uh, I, we started doing that. We we had dinner with some people from the French community. Then we had, and the following day they they were doing surf. Um, we were showing them around the, the place. We were having dinner with them. I was picking some pe people at the airport and taking them to the place where the event was. Uh, and then the the Siltra municipality. Uh, was kind enough to give us tickets to the most important uh, cultural uh, uh, places in Sintra, uh, uh, museums, parks, everything. So there were organized tours on all of those. There was more surf, there were uh, meals, uh, dinners. And, uh, and after that, after a few days of that, uh, maybe four days of that, we started Rubicon uh, itself. And, there, and instead of um, three days, we had four days, um, and we had uh, how many tracks, David? Uh, I think we had we had four tracks in parallel because we had four rooms, so it was four tracks in parallel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, the entire day, and uh, we did something different from before, which is something we learned from the previous, which was we needed more time between every talk, so that not only that you could calmly go from one place to another but because you can you had time to, to engage with the speaker again and we, uh, meet people meet your friends that you hadn't seen yet uh, and everything was much more calm yeah. so that was a lot of that I like yeah. that insight I like spreading the talks out with a little bit of time in between I've organized a number of conferences myself and usually it's you want to accept as many talks as you can, so you pack mm -hmm. them in as tight as you can. And it, yeah, it can be hard. It can be really hard to get from place to place. Yeah, I, th I think also one of the big reasonings was uh, we wanted to have kind of a, because we, we all have the FOSDEM experience, right? Where a talk ends and then you need to go rush into the next room and you're probably not going to get into the next room until you wait for the other talk to, to open up. Um, so we, well, it was also in the back of our mind, you know, like, it's it's Sintra. We're we 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 have four tracks. There's plenty of things to see. Uh, we want people to engage with each other, as Diogo said. Uh, speak uh, have the speakers engage with uh, uh, with people visiting because uh, there were there were lots of people from the community, of course, but there was also a big part of, of the the people there were not from the community, so there were more people, you know, from the IT world. Let's call it like that. Uh, so it was also important to to let those those people have a breather and, and get get to know each other yeah. and uh, make some connections and all of that. Yeah, and, uh, I think we even got a school visit. Uh, I think. Yeah, and yeah, we got a school visit at some point. Yeah, we had some some IT some professional school <laughs> kind of thing. They they came to visit uh, for a couple of hours. Yeah. So that leads me to I think the next question, and you've already touched on this. I think a, a good deal already, but. Um, who is UbuCon for? What is who shows up to these? What's your ideal uh, uh, demographic for marketing UbuCon? 
Yeah, I think I think it's anyone who's interested in IT in general. Uh, of course, we are very uh, Ubuntu technology related things, but not only. Uh, we also have kind of uh, random talks from privacy to security to uh, we had people from the Matrix community coming and giving a talk. Uh, we had um, people talking uh, about how they run a, 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 a server for uh, what's the talker. name? Abu. I was talking about yeah, talker. Yeah, talker server, like a game server that they were running for 20 years. So, you know, it's 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 more it's definitely an IT related conference, but we are open to not only uh, people who use Ubuntu, but uh, in general, if you have an interesting yeah. talk or we if you have uh, something that's relevant, we are very open. Yeah. We had containers, we had container security, we had uh, uh, also a lot of thoughts about Ubuntu Touch uh, and workshops. Uh, so, yeah, uh, puppets. Uh, so it was not. We had a lot of Ubuntu uh, topics and canonical related topics, but it was not exclusive. So th this is also something we do a lot here at Parshis Ubuntu community. Is that and and this was is not uh, exclusive of the Portuguese Ubuntu community because I I, I got inspired by the French. Uh, because I went to the, a lot of Ubuntu parties uh, and I always saw the other communities hanging around there. And um, and I was already friends with a lot of other people from other free software and uh, Creative Commons uh, communities. So I thought, okay, we, we are related. Uh, many of them also use Ubuntu and or Linux or and, and our community also likes what they do and, and are interested in these kinds of topics. So let's get together, let's do things together. And and that helped. Uh, so uh, they participate in our events, and we participate on their events, and and it, it makes it much more interesting. How about the um, with such a diverse array of of cultures and and, and nationalities in Europe? Uh, is the conference mostly conducted in whatever the, the language of the host country is, or is it done in English? No. Um, uh, there were different types of of uh, of situations, uh, but uh, David. Yeah, what I was gonna say, like our experience in 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 Sintra at least was to make everything in English uh, because we had the international uh, community coming in as well. So uh, we kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, told people to please do the the the, the talks in English, uh, just. Just to talk also a little bit about what we are, what we have already kind of discussed for the, the Ubuntu this series, maybe have uh, tracks for specific languages because uh, maybe the, the French community wants to do some presentations in French, maybe the Portuguese community wants to do some presentations in Portuguese if, if necessary. So it's something that we are kind of uh, discussing and it's maybe in the in the air. Uh, but looking back, uh, at least at Ubuntu Sintra, we did everything in in English. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in, in Germany, it was almost everything in English. There were a few talks in German. Uh, but uh, as soon as they noticed that uh, there was someone getting into the room which was not uh, a German speaker, they switched back to English. Uh, in Spain, I, I, I rem everything was in, in, in English, I think, uh, except... Uh, Maybe a few podcasts which were recorded there, uh, because yeah, since since uh, the beginning there were podcasts recorded at Ubicons. There was a, a Ubuntu podcast episode recorded in in Essen. There was uh, we, they actually meshed up with the French Ubuntu and with the German Ubuntu podcast, and in in Paris they did the same. They added uh, Tiago Cajondo, which does with me the Portuguese Ubuntu podcast uh in paris yeah that's for paris in 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 spain we ended up not making a mashup but uh, we recorded a, a portuguese ubuntu podcast episode which was spoken in three languages uh, <laughs> Because uh, when someone entered the room, we started speaking English, unless it was a Spanish. And in this case, we we had some sh interviews, short interviews in Spanish, but most of the episode was in Portuguese. Um, it was a bit of a mess, but it was a very funny mess. Uh, I don't know if there was 
a folk exclusive in Spanish in 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 in, in Spain, but there were a f not just a few in in uh, in France. There were just not a few. Uh, oh, there were plenty of uh, French spoken uh, uh, talks because they they were trying to address uh, just regular visitors uh, visitants of the of the museum so they they spoke french so they and but there were many in, also in english what would you say the the level of um what would you how do i phrase this would you say that a ubukan is particularly beginner friendly is it a place where you come to learn about Ubuntu, or do you? Are is it mostly for for professionals focused on things like containerization and Docker? Uh, I think it's a mix of both. I think we have plenty of talks which are very uh, uh, beginner friendly, but we also have uh, talks which are uh, more specific and more professionally, or people who are more geeky uh, in the community. So I think it's it's at least I find it it's a well balanced uh, between uh, beginner beginner talks and some more professional and advanced talks. And uh, yeah, that's something that we always kind of kind of look like to have as well. Not only have you know specific very hardcore talks for. for <laughs> things but kind of have a mix uh, of, of everything yeah yeah I, I can give you the example of um, we had uh, Martin Wimpress presenting the next the the features of the next version of Ubuntu Mate uh, and we have had uh, people explaining how do you use uh, namespaces and other kernel features to to make containers so yeah we it's the opposite of each other. We also in in France there was uh, there was an introductory uh, introductory uh, uh, workshop to Linux, just the basics. Uh, this is a window, uh, just like if you people never saw a computer before, um, <laughs> and uh, there was also development uh, workshops there. So. I think that there there was a, a bit of everything. Um, I think that. Um, Still, people that are already into technology get more of it. Of oh, I, 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 mm. I, I think it's easy to understand why. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, going historically off of the the people attending UbuCon, uh, where are the where are people coming from? Is it mostly specifically meant for Europeans, or are people coming from all over the oh, world? No. No way. <laughs> Since the beginning, we, we have had people from all over the world. Um, I in in in, uh, in Essen, I remember meeting uh, people from America, people from all over Europe, uh, uh, from South America. Uh, also, uh, the same in, in Paris. Also from Africa. Um, mm -hmm. And in in Portugal, we have had we had the first visitor from uh, Asia, uh, I think, uh, but we have had people from all, all sorts of places. Uh, we we had we had a few from uh, from South America, uh, not as many as we were expecting, but uh, still we had a few. Fantastic. And uh, people like uh, Nathan Haynes. Uh, they, it, it's a regular, uh, and Ali is fun to hang around even after Ubicons. <laughs> uh, kind of digging into like the technical side of like what it takes to organize one of these conferences. Um, when does the process start for an Ubicon? How early do you guys start planning? the next year's Ubicon. <laughs> well, uh, this this year, uh, I don't remember exactly when we started to plan the 2019 one, but I know that this year was more like uh, end of end of last year, and it's like, man, we didn't organize a Ubicon now for two years, and it's like it's time to do something, you know. And then it's like, okay, let's do something for 2022, and then uh, you just get a hang of a couple of people in the community. And it's like, guys, let's do something, even if it is online and blah blah. blah. So uh, that's kind of uh, how it starts. Um, so I would say that now we we have kind of like uh, six to eight months. Uh, organization time in front of us to 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 get things going, so we are right now in the very very beginning, uh, getting getting stuff up and running. Um, 
in terms of, of technical things uh, to do, um, for me, it's going to be the first time that, that we're kind of organizing an online uh, conference. Yeah. Everything is completely new to me on how we should do it uh, in terms of software, how we organize it, what, what kind of oh. things do we need to do. I don't. I wouldn't say it's everything completely new because um, we did set up some infrastructure last time, but yeah. it's not as an, uh, an as complex infrastructure as we left mm. this time. Yeah, I think so as well because because with a physical Ubucon you have to deal with a lot of physical infrastructure as well, um, especially with recordings and things like that. Oh, uh, that's that that interesting. Can tell that was a very about. interesting one. Yeah, I can I can tell tell a bit. Uh, so one of the things that it's it's always it always comes up in the Portuguese community is like, hey guys, you should record the, the meetings, you should record the talks that you do, and all of that. And they're like, yeah, but we don't have infrastructure, we don't have a way to record it, and you know we're just there to chill out and things like that. But uh, for Ubicon, we we were like kind of set on you know having recordings and uh, having all of this set up. Um, and one of the natural professionals in Europe that do this are the people that force them, uh, because you know, like the the size and the amount of rooms and and and, and the scale is just immense, and we are doing it at uh, a very small scale compared to them. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we had our own challenges uh, because of the rooms and all of that, um, so the first time people were uh, very, very kind to uh, uh, lend us uh, some of the equipments. I don't know if, if you know it, but uh, the Fosdem boxes are uh, very famous in the community because they, they are completely built by them, uh, uh, custom hardware, custom, custom uh, boxes and all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are just super easy to set up. You just plug in a camera, they have tons of options uh, and all of that. So we just kind of went to them hey guys can you can you borrow some of the boxes and they were very very kind to let us borrow for the for the con um which also had some 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 challenges to bring boxes from belgium to portugal and all of that but um in the end everything went went fine in in in, in that and we do have recordings for the for all the talks from 2019 um so you can always visit uh, the ubucon europe uh um, youtube channel. channel and yeah and we have everything there uh recorded which is which is pretty great yeah which is way more than we have from any other ubucon europe uh, the french recorded a lot but i don't think they recorded everything and it's kind of hard to find a, a lot of those recordings um in essen i know that some attendees uh, recorded a few talks and you can find some of them uh, on youtube or some other places but nothing as systematic as we managed to 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 do uh, here in in Sintra, and we are very proud of that. Yeah, I'm. We had a very similar experience with when I helped organize uh, our 2019 uh, Guadec conference, which is the mm -hmm. home conference. Yeah. And, um, we we hired a, a company that was simultaneously streaming both of our tracks, live streaming it out to the web, and then also uh, uh, mastering it and and producing them to then post to to to, to our YouTube channel. Um, and I just remember it being uh, so much work, more than I had ever expected to, to get everything set up. But they did a tremendous job. This, this, uh, yeah. this group of people, especially the the editing part, it was also something that you know uh, I was not really aware of how much uh, the amount of work that you need to do in order to edit videos. You have to cut them. You have to ensure that everything is is fine there. Um, so we 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 had lots of help from the community to to help us uh, doing yeah. that. Um, we also had Jack uh, had a, yeah. Jack had a lot in that, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, even with the recording itself, we had a, a community member uh, helping us. Uh, he had a, a few contacts in the media industry, and uh, they came with their professional equipment also to aid us. And he also, yeah, uh, we are uh, very. Uh, Pedro Caetano was very pro uh, or in organizing that aspect of yeah the... <laughs> yeah 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 that that was also a funny one we had we had, we had actually like professional cameras that that records uh that, that they're they come they came out of one of the the, the portuguese um uh channels and TV the, channels, the yeah. 
TV channels, yeah. And uh, it came with uh, an engineer attached to the cameras, which we are very grateful to to have him as well. And and we could and, and and they were actually connected to the boxes that came out of FOSDEM as well. Um, so we it's it's like it's also like this. Uh, one of the good things about Ubucons is also this 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 sense of helping each other, right? I mean, if we we do help each other with with whatever we can and with which whatever way we can, and in the end we always get get end up getting a lot of uh, uh, very generous contributions, uh, being it on time or or on equipment uh, from 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 several people. So uh, that that's also one of the things that drives the, the Ubucons and that allows it to happen and that people don't really know about sometimes. It's like the amount of people the amount the amount of people and also the amount of time and effort that it is behind uh, everything that 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 proposes and uh, an Ubicon to happen. So yeah, yeah, something we should we should keep in the back of our minds. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and it, it's all about time. And um, and I, I yeah, Tiago Cajondo uh, started organizing Ubicon Europe around this time of the year. Um, that that's when we had the first few. Uh, uh, converse online conversations uh, with the community. It had a slow start, then picked up way near the <laughs> the, yeah. the conference time. Uh, yeah, and uh, and and about the the community contributions, it's interesting because we had a few contributors already helping, but um, I, we thought we were short uh, of manpower to help man the rooms and all all of that. Uh, because we need people to be able to rest and also to enjoy the conference. We don't want them to spend the entire time volunteering. Yep. Um, and in the end, in, in, in the day, uh, lots of people started appearing, hey, I want to help, I want to volunteer. Uh, and, and it was an amazing thing. And uh, Tiago Kondo always mentions that, so I'm, I'm just trying to to do a bit of Tiago Kondo here and... Uh, Thanking the community for their the their work. That's great. Um, logistically, how do you decide uh, which host city it's going to be? Is there a bidding process, or is, is it just collectively decided? How does that work? So I don't know how Wesson was chosen. Uh, I know that Paris was chosen because it's the head uh, of the. It's the. It's the capital of Ubuntu in France. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they actually do have an, an association. Uh, they are the local uh, the French uh, community is organized around an association with as an headquarters in in Paris, um, and they are connected with other uh, Paris centric uh, uh, communities. Um, so they they. It was a natural fit for them. They also had the the, the museum always available uh, to them, or almost always, because they had actually had to change the date uh, and the, the the number of rooms and the the exact location of some rooms. Um, but they always do. They always work with that museum, so for them it was a natural fit. In Spain, it was the main organizer, uh, Marcos Cortales, uh, the city where he lives. <laughs> uh, and in 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 Sintra, uh, it was uh, we first tried to 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 talk with the Lisbon municipality. Uh, it was we we had a meeting with them, but they. They showed some interest, but they didn't follow up. <laughs> and uh, we already had a very big relation with Sintra, the city itself, not with the municipality, because every month for the last uh, six or seven years, I don't even know, uh, we do a meetup in Sintra. Um, what we didn't do it during the, the COVID lockdowns, but we did online. But every uh, other month, we, we we were there, uh, so we were doing uh, meetups in a in a pub, um, and so it, it 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 sounded natural for us to do it in Centra uh, when Lisbon didn't follow up. Also, there were a few contacts already inside the municipality uh, that helped us reach the right people to 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 hear us and to take our calls to the higher ups so um it was uh, kind of a natural thing 
so I think it always ends up to be just the most the simplest thing and uh, the most natural thing around the, that specific community. What is more interesting is the process to choose where the next Ubicon will be. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the first one, I don't know how it was. I do know that the French community immediately volunteered to, to do the second one. And um, we were, and as I told in the beginning, we, in in Essen we we had the conversation with the Spanish community, and, and we were already considering doing something uh, in the Abir in Peninsula. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we were we knew for sure that we couldn't do it from one year to the other. <laughs> so yeah, they let let the French do it. They they let them show how how uh, how to do it, uh, and we'll learn from them, and then we'll uh, put our spin on it. And, um, and and Kostalis pulled it off in, in the, the year afterwards, uh, almost by by himself. Uh, the people tried to offer some help, uh, but uh, because they were from very far away, they couldn't help much. I ended up helping with social media, a um, few local or people that were closer to, to Kostalis also helped him a bit, but he mostly pulled it off by himself. Um, but in Paris, I remember to be in a, in a pub uh, with the, the rest of the people, and uh, um, and the French were saying to the, the British, uh, "No, no, no, now it's your turn." And the <laughs> British, there was, "No, no, no, it's their turn." And then, uh, and then there was the, the going to the Portuguese, "No, no, it's your turn." And then the, the no. <laughs> so and you end up, we ended up con- uh, saying, uh, "Costal, is it's your turn." <laughs> You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's decided. We've decided for you that you, <laughs> you were organized one. The, and the British at the time, they were also uh, interested in doing something. Um, mm. It still didn't happen. Uh, but I think there's the opportunity of doing something um, at the same time as they do the Oak Camp. Uh, I think it's a big event there. And the people from Oak Camp which are also communities around Linux and Creative Commons things, they will be very much interested in having uh, an Ubicon, uh, uh, well, either at the same time or afterwards or be, uh, before that. Um, so I think it's a good opportunity. So there's my hint for them. Um, we also uh, volunteered uh, the Italians. Uh, unfortunately, it was in 2020, so it didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, so eventually the Italians will do it I think uh, mm-hmm. I was enamorated by the photos from the uh, um, from Italy from where uh, Dario uh, lives mm-hmm. so I definitely want to go there for a Unubucon <laughs> um, so they, yeah basically we, we volunteered the others <laughs> so who do we have left uh, the English the, the Italians, the Sw- Swedish, Dutch. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think the Dutch are uh, so uh, an organized community at this point. Um, the Czech and the Slovaks uh, are trying to 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 organize themselves. So maybe I went there and I liked. So <laughs> <laughs> why not? They have good beer. They they are chill and um, the the views are also good. So yeah. Outstanding. Uh, so what I take uh, from this is the French, the French really know how to to pull off a conference, and they, they kind of set the bar. Yeah, yeah they and, set the bar, and, they, and they, they're kind of our our guides into this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's 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 true, it's true because because the we we did not only take inspiration for the past, but they also are constantly helping us and bringing things uh, to to the conferences. You know, like ideas and and the infrastructure. I think on, on in Sintra they brought like this camera yeah. where you could you could the uh, make gift out of it, like the gift machine out of it. You know, so they always bring something into the table, which is super interesting. But but definitely yeah, a big shout out to the to the french community because they know how to run things that's for sure <laughs> they are also very enthusiastic um and that always helps and they share a lot of what they do uh rudy d- does a talk uh, every ubicon about having fun with your community and uh, that's uh, also a place to get good ideas <laughs>
Awesome. Um, pivoting slightly from, you know, just bragging about how great the French are. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about how are uh, Ubicons funded? Where does, where does the money come mm. from to pull off such a large conference? So um, most of the money, at least uh, this is my experience from 2019, big sum of the money comes from Canonical. Uh, so they are the, the, the big funders and the big spenders, let's call it like that. Uh, so And then we also get lots of funding uh, from other companies. Uh, they might be, they're usually IT companies who want some kind of representation mm -hmm. and they want, you know, some people to be talking about uh, their, their their products. So we had, in the past, we had people from Oracle talking about MySQL, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, we also have like, kind of like the, in, in Portugal, we have also the, the, the local, one of the local IT companies. I don't know if you remember the name, Diogo. I forgot the name. I do uh, not recall. Yes. Oh, yeah. Angle, solid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Solid angle. Solid angle. Yeah. Solid angle. They also gave us. So um, it's usually funded by uh, by other companies because we want to keep it free. We want to keep it completely open uh, to people who have time and who can travel to the places where we do the, the cons. In this case, it's going to be completely online. Um, but it's mostly uh, funded by. Uh, by generous people and generous companies who uh, like to see this happen. Yeah, even Microsoft was already a big sponsor uh, in oh. Essen. That's where they presented um, a PowerShell for Linux, I think. That's uh, wow. I think that was the big thing that they wanted to show off uh, at Tubicon. Um, <laughs> There, there might have been uh, they had a, a couple of talks I don't remember them all uh, but uh, yeah Oracle um, also big companies uh, we also had have had a few donations from the community uh, and uh, and other companies just local companies sponsoring uh, we had um, a, a local um what do you call the the uh, the office company, David? Uh, the Odoo? no, no, Odoo? no, no. The the company where you, you share the offices uh, to work. Chalet, uh, Chalet, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a company where you can rent uh, office space uh, and uh, do meetings, things like that. They uh, they offered us uh, a party and a dinner. Um uh, we had uh, uh what who else well it's just a couple of local companies where they uh, they used us to activate their own marketing uh and they just offer uh, things in kind awesome. yeah do you find that the the cities themselves or the venues that you host mm. these at do they offer discounts for this being kind of a community well, uh, project to us, it was completely free. Uh, that's, that's good uh, <laughs> we had yeah. we, we had the 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 city cultural center uh, main uh, room and uh, the the uh, modern art museum to us. Yeah, uh, but this is, this is to say just because we behaved very well. Uh, we we had some we had some amount of money ready to to give to them to uh, to to rent the, the space and the place. And uh, at the end, when we went to speak with them, they told us we we enjoyed very much your organization. We enjoyed very much the community. Uh, so we're gonna sponsor and we're gonna give you uh, the. The, the rental for free mm -hmm. uh, and and just to give to give a little bit of context we were uh giving talks in places where as, as diogo was saying there was modern art uh, exposed there so the, it was like um paintings that were that valued probably that were valued probably more than what we got uh, uh <laughs> as sponsorship yeah. for the for the for the uh, for the Ubukan. so yeah it was very kind for them and of course the community behaved very well everyone uh, was was in a good spirit as well so that also that also kind of helped yeah yeah i believe in spain uh they only had to to pay the insurance um yeah. Because the municipality also offered the the place, cool. and um, I don't know how it happens in France, but I think they also get it from f for free. Well, uh, in in uh, in 
in in Germany, I think they it was uh, rented, uh, but most of it was was paid by the attendees. It's them. Um, we had uh, food and drinks uh, in return to pay thirty five euros every attendee. So it was the only Ubicon where we where we had to pay anything. Everything else, all, all the others were completely for free. But even that one, yeah, we had dinners. We had lots of <laughs> of beer. We. We had the almost the entire place to us, so we, I think we, it was completely fair. It's a good use of thirty-five euros. <laughs> um, now, individually to each of you, I'm going to ask, uh, what's your favorite part of an UbuCon? You know, the day comes, you show up at the event. What are you looking most forward to? Yago, do you want to go first? Yeah, uh, definitely the the social part, social and cultural parts. Uh, uh, I, I really like the talks, uh, and, and I cannot say how much I like them, but what really moves me is uh, to meet my friends uh, and uh, to hang around with my friends, do, do, to do things that I like to do with my friends, to, uh, to eat, to enjoy music, uh, to learn about their culture. That's, uh, and it's, it's such a chill environment uh, that... Uh, uh, that's uh, what I like the most. And David, what about yourself? Yeah, I think I think to add to that, it's not only you know get to to get to to spend time with your friends, uh, but also you you get to meet a lot of new people, and you get to meet really a lot of of, of new people, and most of them are very uh, 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 mind aligned with you. Uh, there's also some people who are have a bit of contrarian views of what you have, and that's also very good, of course. Um, so one of the things that I really like getting into an UbuCon, like first day, first thing in the morning, is like like. Who are these faces? Who are these people? Uh, this this person is carrying, you know, this 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 bag which has an Ubuntu logo, and this person is carrying <laughs> a red hat. Uh, you know, like, there's a person coming with a red hat logo or something like that, and I go speak with them. You know, so are you are you from Red Hat Company or do you like more Red Hat? You know, so there's 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 like this whole thing going on where uh, you get you get to hang out with with a lot of like like minded people, um, but. Other than that, I also really like uh, co uh, technical conferences like FOSDEM and UBUCON is like our own community spin of it. I like to think of it of like our own very smallish community spin out of it. And uh, uh, also watching the talks and some of the talks, um, they, they, they also give me some some inspiration to, to do things and to especially to learn uh, uh, new things and even lots of things that the community is doing that I was not even aware of. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix of uh, meeting new people Get hanging around with uh, with people that I know already from the community and uh, getting to learn new things. I think that those are the, the three major things from an UbuCon, yeah. And with this being a uh, an LTS year for, for Ubuntu, do you think that 2204 is going to be a big topic of interest at this next UbuCon? Um, I hope so. I <laughs> really hope so. Um, I remember... Um, in in France, we were. Um, it was 2018. It was oh, 2017, but we were about to launch the, uh, the next LTS. And I remember Dustin Kirkland uh, doing a talk about the feedback that uh, the community gave um, Canonical about where should we go now with uh, Ubuntu, um, and that was an extremely interesting talk. I really enjoyed it. I wish that uh, something like this happens uh, to become this year. Um, maybe not where we are going to, well, with 2204, obviously, <laughs> but because it will, uh, Ubicon will be in, in October. Uh, but maybe uh, where sh should we go uh, from uh, after the first, this LTS to mm -hmm. where, w where should we go to the next one? Yeah, um, maybe maybe a mix of of showing new things, right? Like what's new now on on Ubuntu twenty o four and uh, and all of that. So yeah, I I do think it's going to be a very big topic, uh, especially around new software releases that that's yeah. going to come out. I, I I saw some efforts from Monica uh, specifically, not just Monica, but the the entire desktop team uh, this cycle to incorporate more feedback from the community, and um, I think. It will be a good moment to start that again. 
with Ubicon 2022 being uh, a uh, a remote event, um, how are we? What's your plan to kind of capture the feeling of the conversation and the install parties and just kind of the, the just the discourse that takes place in between the talks? Do you have any way that you're trying to to replicate that in some way? So I was looking into how uh, it was done in the Ubukan Asia in 2021. Um, they had this uh, thing which is called Gather Town, which is kind of a mini little game where you can control a character and you can you have these these rooms and you can speak with people and all of that. Uh, we're also kind of looking into how uh, people can. Uh, chat with the speakers because uh, kind of the format that we want to do, you have a pre-recorded session so that we have a video ready, video is shown and you would have the, the, the person giving the talk in the room. And so they could, you know, uh, 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 talk with each other, uh, ask questions and all of that. Uh, so this is kind of the approach that we're having like right now uh, or that we have in mind right now. Uh, things might change until then, but uh, I don't think it's going to be the same, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely not not going to be the same. We're going to try to do an approach of that, <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully, 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 we will have something in two thousand twenty three in person for that. Yeah, uh, I I think that what we did at, at Fosum with the Ubuntu stand was as close as we can get to have something like the physical. Um, mangle with that we get in, in the corridors of a uh, con um, but um it's never the same thing it's never the same thing i agree yeah uh, we've with all the events that i've organized leap the linux app summit and guadic it's always been yeah the push online has changed things but there's actually been some great things um with the push online like we could we could have uh Without the need for physical presence, there's there's great things like you can have talks spread out further over the day, and like you can have many more concurrent tracks simultaneously. And there's, you know, so you try to work with what you have, and it's not all bad. So yeah, yeah. Now, and we have also, oh, sorry, go ahead. And it's kind of hard to have some people doing talks. Like uh, Rudra is a young kid uh, uh, at school age. I think it would be very hard for him to go to Fosdem this year. Uh, so. Uh, it brings also opportunities, like you were saying. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's one of the things that we're trying to target is to reach an aud a wider audience this year as well. Uh, so uh, putting our uh, uh, online presence out there and telling people that we're organizing an online con. So hopefully we will have even more people attending the UbuCon this year. Um, so that that's something that that we would like to to play around and and spread the word about the community and and hopefully bring also more people into the community to help us. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, we're kind of coming to the end of our of our hour here. I want to make sure that people that are watching have a chance to ask questions. So uh, feel free to ask okay. in the chat if you haven't yet. Um, and uh, oh, we have a question. Here we go. What's the best way to get news about Ubicon 2022? So currently uh, we have uh, a Discord threads going on uh, on the Ubuntu community uh, uh, Discord. Discourse. Um, <laughs> sorry, not Discord, Discourse, yes. Um, so that's currently where we are communicating about things. So we are currently uh, trying to organize things. We are the face where we are organizing things. We don't have a, a website uh, or anything like that. So uh, if you want to get news about it at this moment, it's better to go, to go through Discourse. And uh, at some point when we have the website live, uh, we're also going to tweet more things. Uh, we also have a, a Twitter channel. Uh, Ubucon Europe. Um, uh, also, that's uh, where Facebook. So we are still on awesome. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So we also, yeah. So we're also gonna have those channels where we, we're gonna keep people updated on things there. Yeah. I posted the the discourse uh, post into the chat, so uh, bookmark that Great. if if that's something you're interested in. Um, uh, where and just a quick question. You don't need to go into too much detail. Uh, where are you guys at with the planning for 2022? Are is, are, are things full steam ahead? Or, are things still being planned out? How how are we doing? <laughs> we're still we're still very much uh, setting things up, starting things up. So we are very much in the beginning. Um, we currently have have some tasks assigned to some 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 of the volunteers. 
and uh, we're going to have a meeting this weekend again just to see where, where we are at and, and see if we need to, to push things forward uh, and further a little bit. Um, so we are very in the very, very, very beginning. So it's kind of like we had a meeting and uh, we're going to have now another meeting after these tasks and see what where we're at. Yeah. And so, uh, have the, oh, sorry, Diego, please. So if you guys want to join that meeting, uh, ping us. Uh, we are on Telegram. Also, we are uh, on on this course, just ask us, uh, we'll share the details there. Uh, it will be uh, this Saturday, the 12th at uh, 2100 UTC, I think. Yeah, yeah, 21 UTC. And what would you guys say for people that are interested in volunteering at UbuCon or maybe have never volunteered at any event and maybe this will be their first chance to get involved? Uh, what would you guys say to them to get them engaged? Uh, bring your skills, you know, bring your whatever, tell us what, what your skills, how would you like to contribute? Uh, do, you, do you like maybe to make translations? Do you like maybe, are you maybe good with uh, graphic design or maybe you are good at uh, at writing things or you are good making websites or things like that. So let us know how would you like to help or what you are good at and get in touch with us because we need as most brains and most eyes and most hands as possible uh, to help us organize a great Ubucon. Yeah, even just... Um... Being annoying and asking people, uh, have you done your task? It's it's a useful, uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, project yeah. managers. That's the project managers. Open yeah. source needs project managers. That's yeah. Lots and lots of developers and designers. Not a lot of project managers. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any closing thoughts that either of you uh, would like to leave us with before we uh, finish up our discussion? Uh, yeah, well, as, as 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 we already told, we're looking for volunteers. So uh, feel free to 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 reach out to us. Uh, my my at Dinigrera is on Telegram and is on uh, Twitter. So feel free to reach out. Uh, feel free to also post on Discourse or send us an email. That's on the Discourse as well. If you want to participate, uh, we're looking really really forward for this year to organize a really good bookon, and uh, we hope to see you all there as well. Yeah, and and don't be afraid. Um, uh... You might even not know what you want to do, but uh, if you really want to do something, we'll have something for you to do. And uh, and don't worry if you don't think you have a skill, but because you'll likely have a skill. And if, even if you find out now, it's a good opportunity. And do either of you happen to, to know um, the, the dates that you're shooting for Ubicon this year, or are those still to be decided? So we are planning it to be at the end of October. Um, so if I look quickly into the calendar, it's going to be around the 29 and 30 of October. That's what we are uh, aiming at at the moment. It's not set in stone, but that's what we are where we are aiming at. Are you going to have a, a big Halloween party? <laughs> <laughs> we have thought about that. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a good theme, yeah, to have it. <laughs> Well, outstanding. You two, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for telling us about UbuCon, the history, what's happening for this year, how to get engaged. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I think that everyone that's watching and will watch because this is going to be saved forever. Uh, we'll learn a lot. Um, I And I, for one, am super excited to to see what you guys have planned for for the rest of this year. I, I can't wait to, to find out more about it. And maybe I can get, you know, good old Canonical to send me over to... <laughs> <laughs> or no, it's it's not. Well, but maybe yeah. for twenty twenty three, I can get there in person. Yeah, the, and 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 community people. Um, if you are Ubuntu members, there is a fund for to help community members go to events and and uh, participate. So this year it won't be necessary, but consider to become an Ubuntu member, and uh, this is a, a good perk. Good plug for yeah. for membership. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we we had to, we had a couple just to, to to add to that we had a couple of members who who really did uh, take up on that and they got some financing and they they could get uh, uh, some financing for traveling and all of that. So if you are an Ubuntu member and you want to join an, an UbuCon, you you can get some some sponsorship for that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if there's nothing else, if the two of you are satisfied, uh, I think we can call this to a close. Uh, thank you, everyone who joined us in the stream. Um, I wish you all the very best. Care yourselves. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Britt. Bye. -bye.